Yes, Lord, we just want to thank you tonight for your love, your grace, your purposes, for your church. We ask that tonight you would download revelatory understanding of that which we discuss and that which we see. I thank you for that. Yes, Lord. Um, as we said in the preview, I wanted to share a bit from Hebrews 6 tonight. just want to read a few verses of scripture there. Therefore, having the discussion, oh, sorry, therefore leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. But I actually just want to back up for a moment to verse 12 of chapter 5. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need somebody to teach you again the first principles of the oracle of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Now, a lot of people might say, but how, what, does, what does it mean, the elementary principles? I want us just to look at a few things tonight. Um, the first one I want us to look at, I've just gone in, done a little bit of a study for us on this one, is repentance from dead works. The word repent there, or repentance, is the Greek word metanoua. There's two words for repentance in Greek. One is metanoua and the one is metanoa. Uh, metanoua means a change of mind or a change of mindset, a different way of thinking. And dead, the word dead, used as dead there, is... Sorry? Can you hear? Yes, I can hear. Yeah. Uh, the word dead means to be lifeless or without divine light. And works is ergon, which is, to, is performance. So repentance from dead works literally means a change of mind in understanding that we don't have to do anything. It's all been done for us. The second thing in the in Hebrews six is the is faith towards God. Now it's very interesting. The word faith there is the Greek word pistis, and pistis means a faith or understanding of divine revelation. And ascended knowledge of who God is and that it has been done. In other words, it's not faith in God, it's faith toward God. Knowing in yourself that that which is of faith and what you have received as an ascended understanding, a revelatory truth, is going to happen. It's not a desire to have it happen. It's th the word is different there from the word faith used in Hebrews 1. Hebrews 11 at least, now faith is. The word now faith is, is pistuos, which means a believing toward. Pistos is that faith of God, 
that realization that it is God doing it and nothing can stop it. Doctrine of baptisms, very simple. That is your baptisms, you have your baptism into the body of Christ. Now the Jewish people that Paul was writing to or the Hebrews that Paul was writing to understood the concepts of baptism because in the Old Testament, they had several institutions of baptisms. They had the baptism of proselytes. When you became a Jew, you had to go through orders of baptism where your old clothes were literally cut off you in the, in the baptismal bath and you were clothed in a white garment. Then when the high priest took over from the outgoing high priest, he was baptized by the outgoing high priest into his position as the new high priest of the temple. So they understood baptisms. And baptism, the, the word baptizo, which is where baptismus, which is the baptisms comes from, is means to be saturated with, to infused with. And it comes from the secular concept of garments being dyed they use the same term baptisma, which is something that is saturated until it is drenched through with. So we have the baptism into the body of Christ. We are saturated with Christ until we are drenched through with him. We are baptized into his death and resurrection as an outward sign, and we are saturated with the resurrection life. We have the baptism into the Holy Spirit, where we are placed in the Spirit, that our spirits and the Holy Spirit literally flow as one. Then the resurrection of the dead. You, the word resurrection there is anastisos from anastimi, which means to rise, to stand again on your feet, or to gain your stance or place. So when we're talking about the resurrection of the dead, this term here isn't talking about raising the dead. This is the resurrection of the dead. Um, in other words, all those who have died as saints prior to, they were resurrected from the dead, the graves were opened, and, there isn't, and those who die in Christ, in the physical, their physical bodies are resurrected into glorified bodies. But we're believing we're stepping into those glorified bodies already. Then eternal judgment. This one to me was very interesting. The word eternal means to be outside of time or not affected by time. And the word judgment is krima. The suffix ma indicates as a result of krino, which means to judge or krinos, the act of judging, a judicial sentence. Krino, to judge or declare sentence upon someone or something. And the eternal judgment is that which happened at the cross. It was outside of time that the entire judgment of mankind was eternally judged on Jesus. It's not some futuristic thing that's going to happen. It's that which has already taken place at the cross where the judgment of mankind was placed upon him, could not hold him, and the eternal judgment was when he declared, it is finished. Nothing you and I can do will make a difference other than our relationship and intimacy with our Father in heaven. The more intimate and the more we spend time in the presence of the Father, with Yeshua, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the more the reality of who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us becomes to us. And that is the essence of the basics, the six basic foundations of the Christian's belief. 
And then it says, let us go on to perfection. What is perfection? Perfection is God himself. And what is God? God is love. Therefore, when Paul speaks of, let us go on to perfection, he's talking about the fullness of God and his love being permeated into and imprinted into our very being. That's why in another place it says the goodness of God leads us to repentance, to metanoia, a change of attitude, a change of mind. As we see the goodness of God's love towards us, it creates a whole different mindset, a whole different attitude in us toward God and toward others. And this is where I love what John says in, his, in the epistles, where he says, the least we love our brethren is the most we love God. And as we allow that love of God to permeate our very being, we are going on to perfection. And keeping the, the teaching tonight short and sweet, but I'd like to open it up now to any discussion, any questions on that which we've just dealt with. And then I'd like us to engage for a while. Any questions? Please feel free. Anything you'd like to add or say, please feel free. I just love... I just love talking about how the, the, the judgment happened. It's happened. It's done. And, um, it, you know, it just, oh, there's so many people that don't see it that way, you know? Uh, so, um, I just love, to, love that you reinforced that. That's all. It just brought me a lot uh, that, of that, that's joy. That's absolutely that's the absolute joy. People need to see the, and realize it's not an eternal judgment that's coming that's going to condemn right. them to hell or to yeah. heaven. It's a judgment on the fallen state of man that took place at the cross. And it was, it was done outside of time. That is why it says the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. The world. It is a factor <laughs> that was outside of time. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, so many people really took a hold of that. The whole church, the whole ecclesia would shift in a massive way. I mean, just the way they looked at the Father and love and one another. And it would be like a, a tidal wave of ripples of truth and love and change and it's coming. It is coming. It is. It is. Yes. I love that. Um, that, that just what you were saying there about um, uh, from before the foundations of the world, judgment came. And, uh, you know, several years ago, the first time I heard that, that Jesus had taken, that, that he had already dealt with this judgment, it totally opened my spirit my heart up to see people through the lens of how the father sees them instead of seeing them with an expectation of judgment to come. Yeah. Uh, Doug, um, that's something several years back. I just had such a cry in my heart when I, ministered in churches and pastors were preaching hell and condemnation and judgment. And I used to say to pastors, please try and see the people in your congregation through prophetic lens of how God sees them. Through that lens of them being perfected in Christ. Not needing to perform or do anything other than just resting in Christ. Thank you. 
Yeah. Just add a little bit on um, the baptisms. Um, mm -hmm. Love the way you clearly put it there, D uh, Dimitri, about being, it means being dipped into or being sort of infused with. And so as we also engage, we realize that we get infused into the cloud of witnesses because we one with them. We get infused into the body of Christ in terms of us all being infused into one. Um, and so there's the baptism into us being the body, not the body of, not Jesus's body. We've been baptized into that through um, the baptism in the water and into death and resurrection, but the baptism into the body, the baptism into the cloud, which is part of the body. And um, then it extends for us in to as we engage we get we recognize that baptism is kind of to me it's very much part of being in the realms of heaven because whenever we see something we can go into the substance of it we go into the ah can you hear me yeah you started to fade for a moment yeah, yeah. You cut out. can you start over would it be possible that you start yeah. over Michelle? sure Thank you. Yeah, it said that my internet was unstable momentarily. Um, <laughs> well, you angels, keep things going. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just saying that baptism is something that it, it continues on for us. And so we have the baptism into one another as a body, the body of Christ. We have the baptism into the cloud of witnesses, which is part of us. And um, so we, we, it continues on for us, in my experience, in the realms of heaven, because it means that we get dipped into, we get infused into. So whenever we engage in heaven and we, for example, we see that we see peace, right? We engage peace. We can go into peace, get infused with peace. And that's an it's expression of the fullness that's actually in us, but we're actually experiencing the baptisms into it. We're actually getting aware of the being of peace and the nature of peace. And so in the realms of heaven, we actually are continuously being baptized, you could say infused with understanding into the different parts of the nature of God. Like for example, even we, we could be in, infused, we have infused knowledge where it is just suddenly imparted into us or we're baptized into knowledge. Bap See, so I'm trying to say is that it's a very interesting and, and significant understanding of the idea of baptisms. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, if we look at it, baptism is an ongoing thing. And as you said, baptism, I was just, something came to me as well. Um, the, if you look at the word faith, pistis, it means an infused or revelatory understanding of God at, through an ascended revelation. It's that uh, ascension revelation of the fullness of God. As we're being baptized into that revelation, our faith becomes true faith of the Son in toward God, not just in God, but toward God, understanding that that is the, what's being infused into our very being. Right. And a, something about the... Um, understanding the judgment that's already been completely judged and and when people consider the courts of heaven we do we understand that the, if someone has a question about this what about the courts of heaven what are they for well the courts of heaven are all about establishing or the manifestation of those judgments that have already been made uh, in the cross you know in other words it's just the place where we go um, and engage uh, on the finished work of the cross for the release and the manifestation of it in various 
ways or in various situations, personally or for you know groups or uh, whatever it is that we are shown. Uh, so, in case someone I don't know, and I wouldn't say any of you guys that are on with us would have a question, but someone might listening to this might have a question about that. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Um, if we actually see that eternal judgment, it's, it's a sentence that has been passed, that has been fulfilled. And when we're in the courts of heaven, we are just basically taking whatever the accuser of the brethren brings, whatever situations are there, and we're laying it before that eternal judgment as it has been judged. It's established. Therefore, we have the right to decree it and to call it as it is. Right. And also, as we come, obviously, if there's areas that we need to repent of, that's part of being the court. We're, we're only repenting, meaning coming out of agreement with something. If we've given room to something that contradicts the full judgment of Christ. In other words, if we've given room to a lie and then you know, been believing it, and therefore we're experiencing some trouble, and we recognize where we believed a lie, and we repent for agreeing with that lie, then it just is, we're just possessing the blood that's already been shed for us, that it's already been removed out of our lives, but because we have been giving room to it, we now come to a place of recognizing it. So we take a place of repentance and appropriate the blood that's already been shed for us, the cleansing that's already been done. Yes. I would even call it just enforcing it. Enforcing no, the, the Yeah. The repentance there is literally the same as repentance from dead works. It's that metanoia, which is a change of attitude and mind coming out of agreement of that which we were in agreement with and aligning ourselves with the truth of the completed judged works. But tell me what you guys think about this because I'll, I'll tell you how I feel about it. Sometimes we come out of agreement with things and yet in, in the physical, like our heart comes into agreement with it. But like Paul talks about, I do things I do not want to do. So I, I feel that the, the repentance thing is a work of the heart and it, it may take time in this physical realm for you actually to manifest uh, walking different. Let's just say like an, um, having a, a drug problem or a drinking problem. Your heart doesn't want to do it and you're repenting from it and, and you're working, you're walking towards that, you know, but you keep, you're in this cycle and you don't want to be. What do you guys have to say about that? Yeah, well, Jill, on that, I sort of, uh, how I see that as well is where you actually, that mindset, that heart repentance is when you're, by an act of your will, by conscious decision, you decide, I am changing my thinking in this area but your subconscious mind and programming keeps trying to throw back to you yeah. where you were at. And when your mind has been renewed in all facets of that, you walk in newness in that, in that fa thing that you have overcome. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Because years ago, I was just getting into computers. I knew not, almost nothing about computers. I was working as a probationary pastor um, with the Church of God at the time and doing running the administration of the church. And somebody had just bought the church a brand new 386DX computer. And I formatted it. <laughs> and the guy who supplied the computer to the church, said to me, don't touch anything. I'll be there in about an hour. And he showed me something that you have a mirror file. 
and everything that's been formatted until something else is programmed over it, that mirror file can be re-accessed. But the moment you program something over it, after formatting it, that mirror file is no longer programmable or accessible. And the Holy Spirit just said to me, that's exactly what happens to you. The day you get born again, I format your hard drive. But until you reprogram your subconscious thinking and the mirror file that's there with who I am and my word, that mirror file keeps getting accessed. Yeah, that is so good. That is such a great way to put it. Yes. I love that. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Anybody else have anything they want to say, ask, say? Otherwise, we can just engage for a while. I guess uh, for me right now, the thing I'm uh, uh, reprogramming my mind uh, towards is perfect love and away from fear, uh, away from anxiety. Um, I, I still have moments where, so, where a situation will cause me to react in an anxious way. Um, and so I, I'm just learning how to reprogram and to renew and to come out of agreement with anxiety and come into agreement with God's perfect love for me. And I think that that anxiety is not going to be a part of my life. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's Carry on, Joel. That's good. Uh, I mean, I can relate to that as well. And also something that I've learned is um, a paradigm shift, you know, to look at things in a different, from a different viewpoint, from a different facet, you know, don't get locked in the way that, the way of thinking that brings, that brings, that tends to bring on that anxiety. You, you follow what I'm saying? And the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has really guided me. Oh, absolutely. Moments. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank you, Jill. That makes complete sense to me. I think something else I've also learned in that one is the moment I feel any anxiety over any situation or anything that's happening, I've learned to rest in Christ. When I feel that, I just step back for a moment and I say, Father, if I'm anxious, I'm not resting in your love and who you are. Therefore, I step back from this anxiety and I cast down that vain imagination, taking that thought captive. Thanks, Dimitri. That's so awesome. That's my process, too, I think, in <laughs> get going through it. Mm. I, I really, the, the whole thing where God has just been showing us love, love, love. I just keep getting the same thing for several years now. I just, every time I look at who we are in Christ, all the facets of God's goodness and his love towards us. And I just see when Jesus walked the earth, every single time a major miracle took place and he's preceded by, he was moved by compassion or his love for the people. He was moved by compassion. And as we move by the character of our father, we're going to start to see major things happening all around us. Yeah, and the That's other thing, the <laughs> other thing is, he was moved by compassion when he was on the earth. He was moved by compassion and love while he was walking the earth. Nothing has changed, you know. He's always right. moved That's right. that way. <laughs> Just think, let, let's engage for a while. I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just come to you tonight. Just, well, today. And I ask that you would just lead and guide us. 
We're going to come to you with a clean slate, no agenda. That which we have dealt with tonight, that which you desire to show us, just release unto us that which you would have us enter into a deeper understanding of. Anything you get, feel free just to share. Just want to add something for those who might be watching by YouTube or any other means. Um, I've had people say, but they've gone onto it and they get silence. If you're hearing silence and everybody's muted, it's because we're just busy engaging the heavenlies. So just stay with us and, and engage with us. So uh, the first thing I'm seeing is just this hall, this white, this white hall, and it's kind of clear, um, but it's very bright. And there's also uh, angels around, and I'm just walking through this light, and I just hear the laughter of the father. He's just laughing and just having a good time and just inviting me to step into where he is and just to be with him where he is. And he's just so delighted and so happy that I'm there. That's good, Doug. I, I keep seeing this, uh, the, I, I guess I would call it like a matrix of color. First I saw like a yellow, a circular, a circle of yellow, like a yellow sphere. And then that turned, or, or some, another, another color appeared, which was red. And then, and then green, and it's like making this three D effect thing. I so that's that's what I'm I'm looking at.
the atmosphere I'm experiencing is so welcoming. It's beyond anything I can describe just how, um, how much, how accepted, how truly welcomed I am in this place with the Father, with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. It's like, it's just becoming the, the normal, the normal world for me to operate in. The, no, the normal world for me to be immersed into. And they're just so happy. They're just, the atmosphere is just full of joy. I love that, Doug. Um, just love the joy and um, the colors, which I, I is, see around Father and Assured Holy Spirit, and as what you mentioned, Joel. Um, yeah. So I've been able to engage what um, Jill and Doug are sharing um, earlier when Doug was explaining that like hallway, I just started feeling this um, pull, like, like a physical manifestation of this pulling, um, a beautiful pulling like tug of my heart. And like I saw almost like a rope or a cord and I, I the, the phrase I thought of right away was heart strings, right? Or heart string. And, um, and then I realized it was like an umbilical cord, like God, the father was drawing me back into his heart, like that there's always that heart connection of where we came from, right? In his heart, it's like he's tethering, tethering me back into that place where I haven't yet been made perfected in his love. So that's what I'm experiencing. Oh, that's beautiful, Arabella. And I've just been experiencing, just prior to you speaking, Arabella, for those hearing these frequencies and seeing these vibrational waves and hearing this most incredible sounds that just brought such a peace and a harmony to my actual physical state that I felt like I'm just, I'm not here but I'm just absorbed and drawn into the fullness of that love. And as I was experiencing this, I just said, Father, let your love saturate me. Let this frequency and sound become the resonance of who I am. So good. I just hear the Holy Ghost saying to me, and it's kind of asking a question of just let me be the express image of your nature. Let me be so one with you that with everyone I interact with, they, they see the Father. They see you, Father.
What you just shared, Doug, um, really opened a door for me where I was hearing the Father say, like in relationships with others, where other people's strongholds or even my own, like, can interfere or pull us back down, right? Like just that encouragement to just rise above it, stay above um, other strongholds. And like what he was like reminding me is like sometimes when we have that gift, that feeler gift, right? He's like, I want you to engage with my feelings, you know, not, not the feelings of others. So it's just real personal for me, but it may help someone else. I love that so much. Engaging with his feelings. That's so good. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, that's really good. And um, just about um, forgetting, not in a wrong way, but forgetting others, right? And just really just letting that relationship, let, let, let ourselves be loved, let ourselves experience that love, and let ourselves be in that love with the Godhead. And um, yeah. So the thoughts, as you said, are about the thoughts or the reasonings or anything that, that wants to draw away from that. We just let go of those thoughts because they're kind of in the way. Yes, and for me, it's... Um being sensitive to um, what others are experiencing. You know, we have to be careful not to take those feelings on or, you know, separate. So it's, it's not even just my own thing. It's just, yeah, it's just coming up higher um, in how we relate first with God and ourselves, right? And then others. And I agree, part of that is just letting it go, just letting it go completely. It's that place of not allowing the vibration and energy of others to bring you out of that place of being in Christ and that engaging of his feelings, his emotions, his love, his frequency resonating through you and taking any thoughts that come that take you off that captive and just putting them aside. I love that. So me and Jesus are now, he's just, um, I asked him, I, I just said, Holy Spirit, what is it you are doing? What is it you want me to taste? What is it that you would like for me to see? And the first thing that he put in my mind was Jesus sitting right across from me with a glass of, of wine. And so me and Jesus are just going to be drinking for a few moments here and I'm just going to be drinking across the, just communing with him. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right as you were sharing that, Doug, I guess I'm going to drink as well, but uh, um, I just saw, I went back into the cord that I saw, that like umbilical cord, and I just saw um, I was being twirled, like the cord was being wrapped around me, and I was twirling clockwise, actually, and then I realized it looked like that, like the DNA spiral around me. That's so incredible. Wow. <laughs> we have his DNA. <laughs> Talk about being tethered and then drinking the wine, right? I'm just getting it all over me too. Like it's a half, it's a happy mess. I can't even keep it in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as as we engaging, I was just sitting with the father, and he reminded me of something. He said to me, "Son, have I not said to you many times before, you and I will have sweet communion together?" And I just saw myself and all of us sitting with the father, with Jesus and the Spirit, partaking of that sweet communion. Yeah, I'm partaking of that communion. And um, I hear like the, the cords around me, like that umbilical cord, I, I'm hearing it being strummed, like music coming from it. So I don't know if it's the angels or what, but there's like a sound being played from it. I get the sense that John has come into this uh, meeting as well, has come into this um, atmosphere of being intoxicated on Jesus' love. I just had a sense that he, that he is, uh, he's like stepping in also in that realm, in that dimension of heaven.
I've just been in a bit of a of a court session myself. Um, just a couple of things happening with me in my relationship with Jesus and um, and you know sometimes you can think that you've already dealt with something and then funnily enough sometimes out of the deeper intimacy uh, you know you begin to see wait a minute this wasn't really dealt with and so I was just in a bit of a court session with the Lord to repent for and some things that can be in the way still of that intimacy, you know, and um, I'll be honest, for me, it was to do with comparison. And I thought I had dealt with that one. And, um, and I just had to repent for giving room and energy and effort and, and time and thoughts and letting them be in my mind, you know. Um, but thankfully, the power of the blood cleanses, you know, and this is what I love is that we can be completely and utterly and totally freed up. And, um, and, and changed. And this is what I love about it. I love the transition. I love the change that happens because of the power of the blood. So, I don't know if that, if others might have any sort of a, a you know, a recognition of that. Because there's so many different dimensions of our relationship. Um, but some might still be, you know, facing some things that could be in the way of this play, simple intimacy. Don't want anything in the way. Don't want any person, don't want any group, don't want any, anything in the way of that intimacy. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that, Michelle. I, I can relate to that. Yeah, the uh, the thoughts and the opinions of others have always been my stumbling block when it comes to um, what the Father might be saying or thinking of who I am. And especially when I get into a group of people, um, I often shrink back, uh, becoming insecure, um, always wondering what other people are thinking of who I am. So that's, that's always kind of been the one that I've had to, I've had to overcome through applying Jesus's blood for me and realizing that his opinion and what he says about Doug is true and hearing his voice in, in above every, above all voices. Thank you for sharing that, Michelle. Um, when we started engaging, there was a dream that I had last night that um, I had slightly forgotten about. And as we were engaging, I was suddenly reminded of it and uh, prompted to share it. Um, it, it is semi-personal. Um, and I also wanted to share it. Perhaps somebody could have help give me better clarity on it or an interpretation. Um, but when you shared what you just did, um, Michelle, um, about, um, you know, uh, certain things that you uh, um, thought you had dealt with, and the Lord just, you know, helping you with that right now. Um, this is something that I want to share um, because it's something where I, I am also sort of conscious, just like you said, Doug. I tend to be quite conscious at times of the things that I share, um, not necessarily for judgment, but just, oh, okay, what would the person think? So what I'm about to share is actually me coming out of that place as I do feel it was kind of personal. My dream was kind of personal. Um, so uh, last night, I think it was about 3, 4 a.m., um, I dreamt of, um, for those that don't know, for those that do, I am I'm married. Um, and my husband is, um, his name is King, Kelly King. So in my, my dream, there were quite a few of my family members uh, that were involved, um, like my dad. Um, so just a very quick background. I was brought up a Muslim and I got born again when I was about 16. So for 16 years of my life, I 
I was raised in a Muslim home. Um, and uh, the way, though I grew up in Australia, there was this, there was still this cultural, um, still culture involved where perhaps my marriage would have been arranged. So in this particular dream of mine, I was faced with uh, two marriages that had taken place. First one was uh, led to divorce. And then the second marriage was arranged by my father. But I was miserable. Um, this person that I happened to have married lacked, um, was absent in the marriage. He barely showed love and affection, and I felt very alone. Um, and I was also on the brink of getting a divorce from this second person. Um, and I remember in my dream, like I, could, I felt the hurt, I felt the pain, uh, the heartache. And I, I remember I was um, trying to um, reason with my dad as to why it's important that I get this divorce. And then a little later on, um, I found the person, the person that was represented was my husband. And I felt like he was the one that I wanted to and was good for me to marry. Um, but in my dream, it felt like I was at a loss because I had already been married to somebody twice. And I was also worried in my dream about um, that there was going to be like a legal status or a contract of me having been married twice and then been divorced. So waking up, I was very unsettled and heavy. And it's the first time I've dreamt of something like that. Um, and I do believe there was something significant about it. I just don't have the clarity as yet. So I'm sharing this uh, to kind of get out of the comfort zone of keeping personal things to myself that um, I could be of benefit to of if I was to share it and then to also if somebody perhaps um, has something to interpret or share with me. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm sure that we might be, you know, just as we just listen and as we, we might get different things to share with you. Uh, the first thing that just came to my mind was destiny, your name. And, the, and so what came to me was that in this dream, it seemed as if your destiny was being, it was about your destiny and you weren't finding your true destiny. Destiny, as, as you were sharing that, and then what Michelle said, uh, uh, resonates with me as well. But what I was seeing as well, as you were sharing that, I was seeing that your, the picture of Father, God in heaven, has been affected by the natural understanding of a father figure. And in the dream, it's symbolic of your destiny and the fullness of who you are meant to be is almost seen in the misunderstanding of the fullness of the Father as in the predestined purposes, almost being like somebody you don't want to marry because you haven't seen the fullness of the true purpose of Father and the marriage of the Lamb and everything of who Father wants you to be. 
And it's like I'm seeing God just opening up something that he's going to release to you in a freshness and a more intimate, personal way and relationship with him. Something I had to deal with at one stage was my relationship with my own earthly father and how when my children were born, how God created a new heart in me of a father's heart. And he often takes me back to when my children were small and how overwhelmed I would become with the father's heart and father's love toward them. And it's something that as we grasp the intimacy of that heart of a father, it just opens up a new dimension. Yeah, what Michelle and Dimitri shared um, really pretty much said a lot of what was coming to me in different ways. Um, and I don't have a whole lot to add to it other than just I was seeing it as identity and destiny and knowing the who of whose you are. You know? um, And through knowing who the who, God, you know, or Yeshua of who you are, um, the beautiful lens of what's coming of destiny gets illuminated through that identity awareness of both you and God and the desires he has for you and the greatness contained. And like Dimitri shared of how um, what we've learned on this earth through relationships with others um, can hold us back if we're not careful from really experiencing and really knowing in our knower um, who God is for us in every way. I just keep hearing three words in my spirit, um, eternal pleasures forever. I just keep hearing the Holy Spirit speak that into my heart.
So at about the moment that Michelle was um, probably finishing up with her court case, um, I had saw myself sitting in a circle with Father Yeshua and Holy Spirit, and we were all leaning in to each other, and our cheeks were touching. <laughs> you know, you have like Eskimo kisses and stuff, but it's like our cheeks were kissing, like our cheeks were touching. And I had this desire like that I need to be that cheek to cheek with each of them. And when I had that desire, it was like, it just, the circle started to spin and I was like moving through them. They were moving through me and I was moving through them in, I think of like wheel within a wheel, but I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but they were spinning. We were spinning within each other and our faces were moving through each other. So it's interesting that Michelle was finishing with her court case and it was like I was being tethered into identity and like our expression of, you know, like Jesus, like when we see Jesus, we see the father and when others see us, you know, they see us as sons or, but back into that tethering of identity and affection and union and oneness. And Arabella, that that um, was very similar to what I was seeing with the colors, you know, moving like that and in and out. So that's what it reminded me of. You know, what you were describing is the same thing that I was feeling. So thank you. Sure. And when you were sharing earlier, I, it's it's hard for me not to engage with the seven spirits of God, like the spirits I think of when I see those colors. And so when you were sharing earlier, the red and the yellow and the green, I just, of course, was thinking the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of understanding and the spirit of counsel, to me, that just really resonates um, with what I've been experiencing. Yes, yes. It's beautiful. You know what you also, um, when you were sharing, Arabella, what... Uh, came to my mind was the dance floor and how um, that's about that union of agreement. It's like dancing in the dance of agreement with the Godhead um, and how it seems to be applicable to us to where there have been things in the way of that union of agreement with Father Jesus and Holy Spirit about who we are and about you know, not what that anybody could steal from us our destiny or could be in the way or uh, that we could give room to anything that would distract us away or steal from us uh, that, that place of agreement with the Godhead. And so maybe um, we might just want to all agree with that, that we are, we agree with, we do the dance with the Lord in, in that place of agreement and expressing and agreeing together that, um, yeah, the blood of Jesus has removed for us any, any fears that we would not fulfill our destiny, any, any um, wrong understandings, um, any fears of the influence of man, anything that would distract us away by thought or, or motion or anything from being able to be in a complete agreement with Father, Yeshua, and Holy Spirit, and the dance of that union, recognizing and agreeing that what Father says about us and, and how Father sees us, how Jesus sees us, how Holy Spirit sees us, that that is the truth about us. And that we, we just uh, give ourselves to the dance of this agreement with God. That's so good. And not to distract from the dance, but I was just thinking about when you were sharing, Michelle, I was thinking about how Yeshua on this earth, his identity was challenged so much, you know, not just by Satan, but by 
so many that put expectations on him or didn't see him as the son and um and how that was all uh, obviously it was taken care of before the foundations <laughs> of this world right but it was um that he experienced it and overcame that we have that same inheritance mm -hmm. that's an amazing point arabella wow the the things that um, were thrown at him that um, were trying to persuade him to be anything other than who he was. And yet he said, I always do what I see my father do. I always hear, I always say what I hear my father say. And I'm, I'm reminded that the father says, this is my beloved son. In him, I am greatly pleased and now i can see myself in jesus as being the one who is pleasing to my father in the same way jesus is i love that so much that's so great what you said there doug because that came to me as well and i felt like father is saying to us you are my beloved son daughter and uh, I like to I like to receive from Father that he he said I can I can be a son and a daughter, you know. <laughs> uh, but you are my beloved son, daughter, in whom I am well pleased. And I just saw this crown being put upon our heads, and the crown says a beloved son, beloved daughter, beloved one. Uh, Arabella, also when you were talking about spinning. I was just seeing, as you were saying that, I was seeing an imprinting of the character, the being, the knowledge, the aspects of the Godhead being imprinted as, they, as the heads were spinning through each other. There was that imprinting that becomes an absolute knowing. I believe that's what God's also busy with us, is imprinting the absolute knowledge of the truth of who we are. That's so good. I, I, I just, it's like I just want to stay in that place until it's just, nothing can take that away. Nothing can even challenge me. Like I just want to keep spinning. <laughs> and being tethered and imprinted. You know, over the course of going through this, um, some beautiful things have happened in, in my life, and I just want to thank everybody here. Um, it's becoming more normal for, for my daily walk in Jesus to know that I am already seated in heaven it's becoming more than just a verse that I've memorized. It's actually starting to become who I am. And it's like no big surprise anymore that I can be in heaven and on earth simultaneously. And that, I mean, it's just such a beautiful thing. I'm so happy that Jesus has made this available. I'm just, I'm, oh, I'm just mind blown by how much he desires for 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 me to be with him where he is I believe perhaps it was last week on Sunday or maybe the Monday encounter, but um, someone was seeing, experiencing the colors through like a kaleidoscope. And I was just like, how can I engage everything that's just happened? And I just saw like different shapes and colors, like being tethered 
in me, like as if I was spinning, dancing, or when I was being twirled in the um, umbilical cord, like all these different things. Um, it's like I just, I saw an expression of like a kaleidoscope bringing it all together. of just the various things happening all at once, but in complete rest, not having to think about it. Which says to me that you don't leave that place. You know, you were saying how you wish you could stay in that place. Well, you are. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it's just it's it's like um, <laughs> we hear the word remember, you know, remember yeah. who we are and where we are. Exactly. We're made. <laughs> it's just remembering. <laughs> we're reprogramming the mind, like Dimitri had said. It's that imprinting. When we experience the heavenlies, it's an imprint. It's an imprinting. Like when we are in the natural, that imprinting doesn't leave. And we stay in that multidimensional place of being. And the words just came to me, you are a spirit being. You are a human being. You are being in me. Being, the state of being in all of that. And I like the kaleidoscope concept. I see it. I just wondered if everyone sort of resonated with receiving that, you know, crown as beloved one. You are my beloved son, daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. And you can see and can see that crown upon your head. Absolutely. Receive that. Oh my yes. Absolutely. I could just sense so much joy in that, you know, that acceptance of that, of those words and that crown. And I was like, it was as though we were just sort of um, toasting, having a toast to together, to drink together to that reality. Let's drink to that reality. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's good. Look, look, look. Mm-hmm drinking the wine of his and our identity as mm. one. Huh. Mm -hmm. The drink of union. Mm -hmm. The drink of, of just being that daddy's children that are loved and then whom he's well pleased. Huh. Mm.
And, um, and going forward, like you said, uh, Arabella, about being able to stay in that, whichever we've embraced or engaged and just, if we continue to see ourselves in this way now, with regard to um, wherever we are, whether we're in a crowd or with a few or by ourselves or in, you know, in any way that we view ourselves from this perspective now with the crown on our heads as beloved one, beloved one crown, you are my beloved son. You know, that's, an, that's a full embrace to establish truth uh, with regard to us and anyone else. Just seeing the entire body of Christ in that position. Yeah, I agree. I was just, I was thinking about that earlier and thinking, you know, it's it's probably something that for agreement that we agree together for the whole ecclesia to be uh, cleansed uh, from any things that have pertained to, you know, our wrong worth um, among ourselves and so on, just being cleansed by the blood and everyone having that crown and those words as theirs. Agree. Yes, we agree upon that. As we see that, Lord, we just release it to the region and the area and the body of believers and the sons. That you just, that it becomes an infused reality to each of them. That's really powerful because it removes that judgment mentality we talked about earlier, you know, that wrong judgment mentality that you're still going to be judged one day and that and, and so on, you know, um, that wrong judgment mentality to be able to see all in that in that way that father sees and says, you are my beloved one whom I'm well pleased. And just to actually. Um, present that to others when we consider them. In other words, to, you know, agree in our hearts when we see someone, a brother or sister or a family member or someone, to see them like that. You are Father's beloved son, daughter, in whom he is well pleased. So how does Father be well pleased? Because he so loves us, right? And he's already judged us free and so it makes sense to me when paul says we don't view anybody from a merely human standpoint any longer because if one died for all if if one died for all all died in other words the judgment was passed there's just so much to that eh? yes that's fast that's awesome that's so rich you know it also clarifies doesn't it the scripture that says that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. You know, so it's a bit against the powers, principalities, rulers of wickedness, right? And yeah, so it just gets it into the right perspective. God so loves all of us. That means saved or not. That mean, you know, and I, I, I find I do find that a lot of the the church doesn't look at it that way. Um, but he died for all. All. Now, he loves all. All is all. All, all, is all. all. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a that's a great mystery, even you know, for myself, is that uh, faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. It's actually His faith at work in and through me, as opposed to it being my faith. I don't know if there's a difference. I'm still kind of in the process of discovering exactly what that means. I think it's in part that the that might be because of the fact that we each being spirit beings from the Father, we get awakened to the truth as opposed to we have to have faith. You see, we just get awakened to the truth and the spirit that we are from Father believes Father because it's our Father. That's that the faith of the Son, though. And that faith I was speaking about, where it speaks faith towards God, it's that awakening, that revelatory knowledge that it's not me and nothing I do, and it's not my faith that has to be operated. I just have to rest and allow God in his fullness of who he is to operate through me. So wonderful. <laughs> mm. Okay, what I'm about to share is going to probably sound very peculiar, so I'm trying to put it um, tastefully, um, or I don't know the word, but I was thinking of how, um, as, it, as it applies to like taking communion or, you know, being filled with God and infused with who we really are, um, I saw like, you know, they say like a vessel with holes or a cup with holes can't be filled, right? Because they leak. Um, but I saw myself like a vessel with holes, but it was um, just the DNA, like the bloodline of God just infusing me, being poured into me. And, and of course, redeeming the bloodlines of where I've come from. But everything that, that wasn't of him in the bloodlines just seeping out just like I'm being filled, but it's like these holes only, it's like a place of rest where you just let it go. Like all the wrong imprinting is just falling away. Um, I know that might sound really peculiar, but it's really, it's like I can't get away from um, that expression of what he's showing me. It's like finally, instead of just making all things new, it's like permission to just let it go. Let go of the things and the false images that maybe I've carried or we've carried, um, even unawares for so long. Just let him make new what can be made new and let go what needs to just let go. Mm, that's really good. That's really good. Perhaps we should wrap it up. Yeah, I was thinking that. Yes, Lord. Who'd like to wrap it up for us tonight? Father, we just thank you for the infusion 
of who you are into our very being. We thank you for these times of imprinting the reality of our being. We ask that that imprint printing just becomes stronger and stronger, deeper and deeper. Thank you, Lord. Amen.